Can you hear me? I think so. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, so um, uh, I'm presenting uh, the talk here with my uh, co-authors, David Zvira and Robert Shaw. We are representing the Dissident Networks project uh, at the Center for the Digital Research of Religion. Sorry, oh, you can't see the slides. Uh, sorry, uh, let me say something wrong here. That's the previous one, well, one before. Great, thank you. Uh, at uh, Masaryk University. Uh, we, we would like to thank uh, and, and acknowledge the European Research Council for funding our project, as well as the Center for the Digital Research of Religion um for uh assisting us in this endeavor um so uh with while working with uh, languages of the past historians must uh, have an expert understanding of their source text and be able to place them in the correct context uh in, historians from the medieval era work intensely on extracting meaning from source texts, requiring them to also have a good understanding of the languages in question. Um, <clears throat> so as part of this endeavor, we are annotating transcribed medieval inquisition registers using the recently developed compu computer-assisted semantic text modeling approach, which we call Customo. This is inspired by well-known ideas on meaning representation, including RDF, uh, web ontology language, semantic web, and quantitative narrative analysis by Franz Josi. It's a human controlled process. It is also computer assisted, and it is meant to model the source closely uh, in, in different, all, all kinds of different ways, lexically, so it follows the original language, but also syntactically, semantically, and contextually. So you need to keep track also of which document you are working with, uh, which context you are working with, and the textual order of the documents. We work with semantic text called semantic units called statements that allow us to model virtually everything in a source text. Uh, so this can include semantic syntax, discursive elements, and analytical layers, which include the epistemic level, certainty, modality. Uh, we also model conflicts in this in the text as well as ambiguous evidence. Uh, the data model is founded on entities, uh, where we have basically two types, action and concept, as well as 10 individual types, or actually just individuals that are specific entities. So each, uh, each entry is a, very, is a specific person, a specific group, a specific value, et cetera, et cetera. And then they are also related in different ways. <coughs> so statements link an action that's governed by an action entity to so-called actant entities, while properties link a source entity to a property value entity via a property type, which is always a concept. Uh, relations are, also, are, 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 of course, also of several predefined types. So it can be class, superclass, synonym, what we call action event equivalent, which I'll describe in a minute, uh, which basically sets the core semantic and ontological links. Uh, statements uh, <coughs> can also have so-called chains, where you have the main statements that uh, refer to subordinate clauses and so on. Uh, it also covers modalities such as uh, questions, uh, wishes, rather than just an indication. We also have valency frames that are defined for verbs. Um, if you go to these, these URLs, you can, you can see more. I will also li list them at the end. And then we also have a, a, a basically a, a custom uh, a locally made data collection interface, which we call Ink Visitor. Um, uh, and I will show you a little bit uh, wh what it looks like. Um, so here on the right side, you can see a statement that is being edited for the, the statement said John Thornton one day. Um, and within the statement, you can uh, set various entities, for example, actions, actions or actants, for example, to be of specific types. You can set semantic relations. 
uh, one day, for example, is a value. Uh, you can link it to other statements, uh, such as never was there such a dog. On the left side, you can see list of statements. Uh, you can set uh, semantic relations, so C would be concept, for example. And then on the far left, you also have circled what we call territories, which is just a name for the, the different types of documents that we work with, but also uh, with respect to the, the hierarchy in the, in the, in the collection. Um, this is a, a graph-based uh, uh, approach, which was generated by the Neo4j browser, uh, where we have a, a sort of a, a Neo4j um, <coughs> Uh, a small database that 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 was uh, basically imported from a document-oriented database very recently. Uh, this is for the statement never was there, and said John Thornton. Uh, and you can see here. Let me use this. You can see here. Does it work? Yes. So there is the statement, and you can see that, for example, it has this accent of one day. It has another accent, John Thornton, which is the person. And the person has the class person, uh, it has property, surname, um, and never was there such a dog, it has act and dog, etc. So uh, it is a very nice, nice way of visualizing the information. Um, we also have valencies, uh, or, or, um, code valencies. Uh, so there are different types. We have syntactic valencies where we have act and slots which basically represent the argument structure, uh, semantic roles as well, uh, where, uh, it, where it restricts the type of entity that may fill a slot. Uh, for example, the Latin word dixit, which means says, always assumes that a person must be in a subject slot. Then we also have lexical valencies, uh, which require uh, specific, uh, for example, specific prepositions to proceed uh, as a certain argument, for example. Then we have the, uh, which I may have already mentioned, the concept uh, of concepts and actions. Um, now, the coding of customer, it follows the principles of knowledge graph creation. So we have the concepts of entities and relationships, events, properties, metadata, which follow a specific data model. The idea is that it must be be, be able to process be, be processed efficiently and un, unambigu un, un, unambiguously by a computer, uh, and it consists of a network of related data points, properties, and semantic relationships. So, apart from the individual entities, so we have the individual values that are mentioned. We are building a lexico-semantic network of related concepts and actions. So, this as well as the customer output that can be used for querying and different varieties of quantitative analysis. Uh, actions are basically verbs or phrases that are represented as predicate in st predicates in statements. Concepts are basically all other parts of speech tags, mostly nominals. Uh, we are also implementing part of speech tags. Labels are basically uh, referring to the lemmas. Um, then there are descriptions and as mentioned as well, semantic relations. Valencies, uh, with valencies, every, any verb can be a lemma meaning, meaning unit, which means that basically polysemes are rendered as different entries, separate entries. Uh, and then for any actant slot, such as the subject, uh, three valency types are defined. You have your entity type valency, what entity type it can take. You have semantic valency, and which I mentioned before, and then also morphosyntactic valencies. Um, and basically, which defines a proposition and a case for that actant that helps coders to decide whether this is the right action. Um, this is just a small list. It's not a con conclusive list. Uh, it's about half of it, of the types of relations that are available. Uh, superclass is basically hypernyms, a superordinate term. So apple is a kind of a fruit. We have synonyms, antonym, an, antonyms, and then property reciprocal, where basically the, the, the relation goes, into, goes to both ways. So mother and child, so mother having a child impl implicates that the child, that the, 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 the mother entity is the mother of the child. And then actually event equivalent basically means that you have uh, sort of, uh, in, uh, you know, um, you can link the concept of baptized to baptism through the through through the process of nominalization, 
Um, and in this case, it is a way to, to, to link these kind of concepts, which are very similar to each other. Then there are also hol holonyms, as well as implications. So, for example, if you dine with somebody, it, imp it implies that you're in the company of that person. Uh, these are some, uh, some quick uh, um, um, statistics. Uh, we don't quite know the, c the complete number of statements that has been built already because we have been working with two different sources. One of them was uh, imported into the database. The other one was uh, made on Google Sheets, different stages of the project. So we are working towards uh, merging that. <coughs> you can see that there are quite a lot of entities um, of which actions are quite a small bit uh, at this stage. Most of them are Latin and then there are a bit more, few more concepts, uh, about half of it Latin, M uh, most of the rest is in English, uh, quite a lot of relations, and within the concepts and actions network, we have uh, uh, just under 7,000 relations. Then we have uh, about halfway, uh, well, let's say a, a, a few, a little bit less superclass relations, synonym relations, not so many uh, so far. The same with action event equivalent. Uh, but a bit more act and semantics relations. Uh, this is a force directed graph of the concepts and actions um, uh, network, where you have, if you can see it maybe properly, you, it looks like most of it is green, but there's also some blue, which basically means we have the action, we, we, we have actions that are connected to, to concepts you, via the action event equivalent relation. The, um, <coughs> This work, yeah. That um, big, uh, bigger square there at, at the top there is the root node, root, root concept node entity. Uh, so in a lot of cases, you have basically taxonomies that go up to the root entity, but it is not always. There may be some breaks here and there. So this is what we are working on. This is still. Uh, we also link to English WordNet, Sunset IDs, and or Sense Keys. Um, we currently store customer output in a document-oriented JSON database. It is, it is compatible with graph-based approach, and we already have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, created the Neo4j implementation and basically a projection of the document-oriented database that can be queried in a more intuitive way and for which tools exist that can produce helpful visualizations. Uh, this is Neo4j version, basically, of um, of the concepts and actions. I'm not sure if it includes everything, but uh, quite a lot. Uh, and uh, it should be clear here that the, the red dots are the actions and the green, the green nodes uh, are concepts. Not quite sure where the, where the, where the, the root node here is, but uh, it, yeah, it, is, it, is, uh, it is not, I don't think it's in, uh, programmed to, be, to, to look a little bit different here. Of course, if you zoom in, you can find it. Um, then, of course, we're working with a corpus. We have a corpus of uh, more than a million tokens, and which is still growing, um, containing um, basically inquisition records of uh, depositions uh, from the mid-13th to the early 16th century. Um, I think I missed a word there. Uh, from uh, central Italy to England, including France. Um, the vast majority of these corpora are written in Latin of the, the word. So the corpus consists of only the source texts. Um, or annotation is also based on digitized transcription. So basically the annotation, the customer process was actually started before we actually uh, st uh, yeah, started to compile the corpus. But uh, as statements and also it's con the, the, the connected concepts and actions are linked to the corpus, we can place where these statements occur in the corpus. It is possible to enrich um, the, the, basically the database even further with the textual context in the first place and also with layers of linguistic analysis from NLP tools. So, uh, in, pr in principle, it is possible to refine query the querying process. So, corpus query systems can already apply part of speech tagging and limitization. It is it's mostly doable to assist with the disambiguation of homonyms or polysemes. Uh, I will use the verb facere, which means to make, do, or accomplish, or become passive. 
you know, if, as an example. So by being able to filter search by additional means, such as valency patterns, different types of relations, we assist, with, uh, assist where we require a human subject and indirect object like a personal group, as well as a non-human direct object. So we would be able to filter by semantic relations. For example, it must act as a superclass for the entry fetched miraculum, perform the miracle, match a certain word in its senses, et cetera. Here's a short, uh, yes, yes, another output, uh, Neo4j output uh, browser output uh, of basically uh, which is a different word form. It, it shows here where it connects with English WordNet. Um, and uh, basically, you can see also some English terms, uh, basically concepts coming in here. So, for example, uh, has event making um, action. You know, so A1 means basically act, the first actant in the in the acted uh, slots uh, combinations. Um, yeah, maybe let's just go on to the next one. So the idea of invisible lexicography, first of all, the primary goal here is to code the salient aspects of the source text, to answer historical questions, not to build linguistic resources. We see the latter being produced as a useful byproduct, however. So we are actually in effect building a linguistic resource for a relatively underrepresented variety of Latin for a specific domain. So it is basically the fact that it may be useful for lexicography is a useful side effect of our efforts. So um, also coding the resource registers using Inquisitor involves various linguistic decisions for the purpose of meaning representation. So in a sense, we are performing some tasks that are associated with lexicography. We just should uh, mention quickly the Linking Latin project, which uh, some of you may have uh, um, uh, heard about yesterday in the, yesterday morning at the keyword, uh, uh, keynotes, uh, keynote speech. So it follows linked uh, open data uh, principles to link up different Latin resources in a lemma-based approach and kind of standardized approach, including dictionaries and Latin WordNet. So currently we are exploring how we can make use of these resources to expand our knowledge base. Clear next step in this, in, uh, in my opinion, would be to link our lemmas and meanings to corresponding URIs in the Lila knowledge base. Uh, as get, getting back to the, the idea of lexicography, uh, how it can be relevant. So our database allows for in-depth quantitative analysis using various methods. How can this be useful for lexicography? So one possible approach is to annotate our corpus with all these semantic relations available through statements, upload the, the, this to Sketch Engine, uh, and um, basically collaborate with, uh, with them to see what is possible. To create word sketches, um, a word sketch grammar can be written that can make use of NLP enriched layers, including dependency relations as well as semantic relations. Uh, there are some uh, projects that have already have done this. So there are some, uh, we, we found some papers where, for example, they have semantic annotation, for example, for hyphen and uh, word sketches that you can, that you can basically um, look at. So the problem is that the coding of statements is slow. It covers a very small subset of the corpus because it's a manual process. So one possible solution to this is to utilize machine learning to perform semantic tasks that are currently done manually in the Inquisitor. So such tasks can include semantic role labeling and relation extraction. So uh, one typical task for this is weak supervision where you basically you have the, the situation where you have a, a small amount of labeled data. So basically annotated data, human annotated together with a much larger set of unannotated or unlabeled data. And you use this uh, basically to, um, to, uh, <coughs> uh, to uh, inform your, your machine learning model, which uh, generally works better than just pure unsupervised uh, approaches. However, as we know, uh, neural nets uh, have been performing really well these days on, on all kinds of natural language processing uh, uh, tasks. Um, so there's also a BERT model for, for, for Latin. So it's a language modeling approach that produces contextual representations from unlabeled text that has been used to inform and improve a number of NLP tasks. So uh, it might be, so it is, uh, it is it's definitely something that we could have a look at and see and see how it performs. It might also be possible to generate certain aspects of the customer process beforehand, even before even using machine learning by pre-selecting statements, for example, by making use of a parser, if we assume that uh, statements uh, correspond to, to, to syntactic phrases, then this can be done. 
uh, and perhaps by auto suggesting entries in the network, for example, by using um, uh, part of speech tags to, to, to suggest, uh, for example, entity types. Thank you. So um, today we've represented the knowledge base for the description of historical sources for a specialized domain, which is inquisition registers predominantly in medieval Latin. The main goal is the quantitative analysis of the sources using advanced computational techniques. However, this resource contains useful linguistic data, including syntactic and semantic descriptions of concepts and actions, and the annotation of, corp of a corpus as modeled statements. So this has also the potential, I think, to be exploited by lexicography, as the entries are corpus-based and or can be verified by corpus analysis. Thank you very much. Sure, that's a good question. So, um, uh, so w uh, one question that we have looked at, for example, is um, to try and find out um, what is the the role of men and women. So, how are the how is the agency portrayed in the text? Um, so, we can, for example, um, use a parser to parse the text, and we can extract predicate argument structures from the from the parser. So, and then we can link them up with um, with uh, pre-existing names of men and women, for example. Or we can uh, look at pronouns that are gender specific gender pronouns, and we can say this is a man, this is a woman, unambiguously. And what we can do then next is we can uh, look at the verbs and classify and look at the customer output to classify the verbs according to uh, do they seem to be um, moving around more? Do they communicate more or less? Do they do they preach more or less? Um, using the superclass relations can help us to sort of uh, subdivide uh, the actions that are associated with men and women, or perhaps also with the interactions with each other. Uh, to be able to get a better idea of uh, is is it is what the historians say really true? Can we can we quantitatively also uh, you know really confirm that this is the case, or does the data tell us something else? So this is just one example. Uh, you know there are others as well. We we look also at uh, processes of incrimination. So we look at uh, basically. Uh, how the the, 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 the the corpus, but also you know uh, basically how the, the the let's say the the timeline of processes, uh, what it tells us of how the incrimination process works, and yeah, and uh, in what under what conditions um, people tend to, for example, incriminate their own family members, or uh, tend to just uh, you know resist the, the inquisition, for example, and things like that. And um, when we have access to all this data in this uh, this really um, uh, you know very uh, coded information, we can make better decisions on what the data tells us, basically. So, in, in a sense. So. Yes, so we, we have tried to do that, but we found that in, in our case, um, it does not always uh, see, seem, seem to contain the concepts, for example, that we are looking for. I think that the, 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 the reason for that is that um, we are working in sort of restricted domain with a, with a very specific, uh, in a very specific time period. Uh, so there may be concepts that exist for that period that mean certain things, but which uh, has not been, which have not been uh, uh, basically uh, used in Latin WordNet up till now. Um, so we found that, yeah, in some cases, we, we, we some of the information that that are, or the statistics that I didn't show, is basically show how many single word Latin concepts we have, how many multi word uh, concepts or Latin uh, lemmas we have. Uh, because we in, we do include multi-word uh, concepts, so uh, word, uh, Latin words generally do not include uh, multi-word uh, uh, entries. Um, 
and we also see how many of them basically map. So it's about roughly 75 to 80% of our concepts uh, so far, concepts and actions do have equivalence in Latin word, but it is not quite uh, where we expected it to be. So a better, a better choice probably would be to link up with Lila, which I think has, a, has much better coverage. Yes. Thanks. <laughs>